He's an introvert, interviewing strangers from the internet, knocking down the walls of his comfort zone, one conversation at a time. This is the Gary Cantrell Podcast. And welcome back, everybody. On this week's podcast, we got my boy Ethan at Depressed, the number two, Determined. I'm really excited to have him on the show today. Really excited to talk to him. He's been on fire with his Let's Talk About It podcast. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. You know what, though? This is the funny thing about Ethan is that this guy has like such a smooth voice that I almost feel like, God damn, I just need to get out of the business. I need to like stop podcasting because he's so damn good. Um, maybe, maybe my time has passed me here. Maybe I just need to take a walk and, and get on the hell out of here. But, uh, before we, uh, before we jump into the, uh, thing with Ethan, I'm going to give him a call here in just a second. I want to tell you about my Patreon podcast producers, Daryl at your level fitness, Caitlin at Caitlin Elise put three Y's in her name, because of course, you know, this by now she's three times as awesome. Vanessa at Vanessa Ray's journey and Amanda at Mutz underscore and underscore miles. All of these incredible folks are helping to keep the lights on in this place. And really the, uh, your support of the show can go a very, very long way. The way to do this is patreon.com slash Gary Cantrell. You can get in as low as $4. And by doing that, by your $4, donation to the show you will get the show five days early so right now most of you i'm going to assume is listening to this on a wednesday well the people on patreon are hearing this the friday before they've already got the show and what i'm talking to you about right now they don't even hear it because all the ads are removed from the show the show is also exported in a higher 192 uh bit rate and so you're getting even a higher quality. These are just some of the perks that you get if you sign up with patreon.com uh, slash Gary Cantrell. It's, it's probably the best way to support the show. And look, I get it. Not everybody's got the money. Money can be tight. And if that's the case, um, I would love for you just to take a moment and go on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, leave a review for the podcast. If you're enjoying what you hear, the best way to help this show is to leave a review. Apple puts so much freaking stock in these silly little reviews. Now, if you're somebody that's sitting there just listening to the show week after week, you're like, God, I love this show. This is awesome. And you haven't left a review yet, please. It only takes like literally a minute. You throw down five stars. You say, Gary's the man. Uh, show is awesome. Whatever it is that you want to say. Um, and you hit submit and you're done. And this can go a long way for the show. As of the time that I'm posting this, we've got around 74, 75 reviews. I really like to get that to a hundred. So if you guys can help Hulk me up to at least a hundred, I think that would be awesome. Maybe Apple will open their eyes at that point and say, okay, wow, we got something here with this kid. Um, so help me out if you can, uh, on Apple podcasts, iTunes, even if you've got an old PC with iTunes on it, maybe you're like, you're an Android person. You're one of those. Eh. Um, you just go on your PC that you have that has iTunes. Cause I guarantee you, a lot of you probably still have it. And you just log in, you go to the podcast, you find the Gary Cantrell podcast, you leave a review. It's really simple. If you have the, uh, Apple, uh, iPhone, the iPad or the Mac, it's super like stupid simple on that. So if you can help me out, I would really appreciate it. Um, also the flying pig marathon.com. We've got the, uh, race coming up the first weekend of may hope to see you there. Use my code Gary 10, get you 10% off at checkout and you can join a bunch of the, uh, Instagram, uh, community that, uh, you hear on this show. And, uh, you can, uh, hang out with all of us and run a cool race and have a good time. The city of Cincinnati really gets behind this race. It's always a good time. Um, I did mine, uh, last year. It was awesome. Let me tell you what. So if you can join us there, we'd love to see you. And finally, hardworkalwayswins.com. That is my clothing line, but more importantly, it is my mantra. I speak it. I wear it. I live it. And now we're on Teespring 
where we are uh, able to drop the prices, better customer service, higher quality. It's a win-win all around for you, the end consumer, uh, the supporter of this show. And uh, if you want to, if you want to get some cool uh, hard work, always wins swag. The best way to do that hard work, always wins.com. All right. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get Ethan on the line here. We're going to talk to him here on Skype. Ooh, I hope Skype cooperates today. Uh, that would be amazing if they would. Let's go ahead and dial him up here. There we go. Hey, buddy. Oh, I just did an audio call, didn't I? You sound beautiful. No, hold on. I think I can turn on if you hit the um if you hit the little video guy, you should be able to let's see. There he is. How much garbage is that? You can see the blue shipping blankets. Oh. You can see my light uh, absolutely blowing out the background. You can see a TV <laughs> there. Yeah. Oh, let me see if I can well, adjust I hung, my lighting. When I hung the, sh- the 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 black fabric, I hung it uh, using the shot from my phone. Right. Which is not anywhere near as wide as this. Which, like, obviously doesn't bother me, but uh, it kind of bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. I'm just doing some adjusting here. Um trying to bring in a little bit of lighting here. I here's the thing. I have colored lightings in my office, like the Phillips, mm-hmm. the Phillips hue, which I love. Yeah. Um, and it's just, so it's <clears throat> fuck it. This is good. It's just a matter of like, uh, <laughs> it's just a matter of like adjusting it to the right flow. Problem is I only have two lights that are actually colored. And then the other two are just like plain ass white bulbs, which I'm not, you know, big on. So I need to swap those out, but Phillips hue, your prices are too goddamn high. All right. We're just going to say that right here. You're too high. You need to lower these prices a little bit. See, I just use a, uh, I mean, I'm also cheating because I'm in a six by three sound booth, but I just use the, uh, the strip lighting, the led strip lighting. So I love it. Yeah. I, I, my problem is I'm, I'm too much into like the smart home stuff. So I have like all the, I don't want to say her name. Let's just call her the, uh, the Amazon speakers. And yeah, yeah, yeah. so I summons that her lady. by saying her name and, and she turns my lights, different colors. She turns them on and off. She turns my television on and off. I'm a big tech fiend. I love that stuff. Now you seem to be very good with your hands and building stuff. I would imagine that that's probably a world that you're heavily invested in. Um, Ironically enough, like despite the fact that uh, I guess we're going to pull back the curtain on on when you record this and when you release this stuff, which you've yes. done a couple of times, despite the fact that this weekend, this last weekend, I just built this sound booth. Um, I'm really not that good. I guess I can't really say I'm not that good at working with my hands. Really? I built a sound booth. Yeah. You just built a goddamn okay, so, sound booth in like what, one day? Come on, man. It was like, it was like 12 hours. I don't, it's not that I'm not good at it. It's that I don't, I don't do it that often. Okay. Fair because, enough. Like w- working with, with wood is, um, in my opinion, a lot more expensive than it should be. Yeah. The, um, the, let's see the wood plus the insulation that I bought. Um, I probably spent somewhere near like $700. Just good for, God for this whole booth, $700. Yeah. Wow. And like technically, so like technically we're not done because dad, <laughs> dad, uh, is trying to get into vo- retire into voiceover. So this is going to be like his workspace as well as mine. Uh, so we need to, uh, pull up the floorboards and insulate the floor. We need to pull up the, or pull off the, uh, drywall from the three original walls yes. and insulate those. So that's like another $700 is probably what we're looking at before it's like, actually like a uh, professional ready. Right. But I mean, for what, for what I'm doing uh, and if the house is quiet for what he is doing, it works much, much, much better than what he originally had. So, so I guess this is where you get your, your great voice, uh, from your father. Uh, yeah, oh, it's <laughs> definitely not my mother. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be frightening. Uh, yeah, it's my dad. Uh, funny story when I was younger, um, someone called and picked up and thought they were speaking to my father, but I didn't realize, well, one, I didn't realize they thought they were speaking to my father. And two, even if 
I thought they were speaking to my father. I wouldn't have told them that it wasn't my father. It was me. Uh, yeah. This was like when I was like 12 or 13 years old, um, which obviously phones distort everything. But yeah, my father and I sound very, very similar. Wow. So you guys could almost have like your own voiceover, like uh, production, like firm where you guys could just chop up, do voiceovers all freaking day. I mean, in a perfect world. Yeah, that would be <laughs> like, you know, in this, in this tiny three by six uh, sound booth in, in the middle of Florida. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be cool with that. No, I love it, man. I actually just started getting into voiceover stuff. I, by the time this airs, I have a Fiverr account set up and I'm just doing like cheap nice. voiceovers just to get my feet yeah, wet. Yeah, like yeah. people always say right. like, oh, I'd love to like, you know, you know, I think you'd be perfect to do like a voiceover. And I was mm-hmm. like, never, I mean, we've, we've had this conversation. I'm mm-hmm. not like a hundred percent confident in my voice. I know if I throw some processing on it, I really like my voice. But right. um, I wanted to dip my toes into that water as a potential, you know, uh, revenue stream that, you know, one day, you know, the whole idea is like, we want to do the things we love, right? We don't want to go to the bullshit jobs. I mean, I like my job. I'm not uh, mm-hmm. saying anything bad about my job. I like my job, but right, right, right. in a perfect Especially world, they're watching. Uh, yeah. In a perfect world though, like you said, you know, in a perfect world, if you can do what you absolutely want to do. 2020 is all about this podcast and it's all about, you know, audio and leveraging what I have to make something of it. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Like you said, we were having this conversation and I I assume it happens to you all the time, probably as much as it happens to me, but getting the DMS, uh, oh my gosh, has anyone ever told you? Oh my gosh. I hope (laughs) this isn't creepy. Yes. Um, you know, uh, have you ever thought about getting into, yeah, yeah, I've, I've thought about it a couple of times. You yeah. Know? Um, so my dad, the crazy thing is, and I've, I've honestly thought about doing Fiverr simply for the practice. Yes. Um, and I mean, if you're charging, you know, five to $20 for a voiceover, they, like they're, they know they're not getting a professional voiceover. Of course. Um, my dad has already put something like five or $6,000 into lessons and, uh, and, uh, stuff like that. So like just right. getting into my usual response is just getting into voiceover, uh, is incredibly expensive and I don't have the money to do that. So, but yeah, getting practice, getting used to, uh, which I think, you know, I, I mentioned this in a video that I sent you early, just, just earlier today, the deeper I get, the more I peel, uh, open the, the layers of the onion that is podcast, the more it gives me opportunities to grow, being able oh, yeah. to sit in front of a microphone and just practice this being normal, I think is a very huge, uh, uh, tool. It's a very good tool, uh, for someone that wants to eventually potentially get into voiceover. Well, I think we're already here in this, uh, podcasting kind of space. We might as well talk about it uh the let's uh, talk about it yeah let's talk about it uh let's talk about the <laughs> let's talk about it podcast you launch your very first episode today which i listened to and i'm like you know i'm, I'm just sitting here listening to this now you've never done a podcast before i'm looking you right no, in the eye you're uh, telling me right now you've never done a podcast i've never done a podcast i god you're so full of shit i'm not though dude. okay okay <laughs> hear me out hear me out ethan hear me out i listen to this thing and i'm like this guy like, first of all, I thought I was listening to like an audible book. Like that is how like so smooth that it sounded the, uh, the delivery in it yeah. and the, uh, the sound from it. Editing, okay. Well, no, it's how editing is editing is fine. Unlike what yep. uh, Mr. Daryl Perry thinks. And I love him to death. He hates the word editing. Uh, I, yeah. I love it. I don't edit a lot. Like, you know, when you hear this podcast, most of what we say here is in it other than just like, Mm -hmm. you know, adding in the music and fading out stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, or if I cough, I'm going to take that out. But for the most part, I don't edit really a whole lot, but I'm listening to what you got it. This is your very first podcast. And I mean, just right out of the gate, you know, you're just, you're in it, man. I mean, you sounded like you've been at this for years. I mean, do you sit down with your father and like talk about like techniques or like you, are you just observing him or like, what? I mean, there has to be something. No. There's no way you just picked up a mic and just said, okay, I'm doing a podcast. And that was the first thing you came out with. I have a hard time believing that because I thought it was very, very good. Um, first of all, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. That, that means more to me than, you know, and second of all, uh, yeah, that's, that's just kind of how it came out, which it's wow. funny. Um, 
my dad, I eventually want to do a podcast with questions from people that follow me on Instagram for my dad about me. And yeah. one of the things that my dad loves to say is how much that he hates that basically whatever I decide to do, uh, which that usually is the hardest part is deciding what to do. Yep. Um, whatever I try, I'm usually just like naturally and annoyingly good at it. Um, which is, it's taken me a very, very long time to believe that, you know? Yeah. I, I, I get it. I mean, so, yeah. Like I had, let's see, two, back in, before I, before I even started working out. So like 10, 11 years ago I had, I was very into the, um, religious aspect of life. So I actually had a YouTube channel, uh, that, uh, surrounded religion. Um, so I had practice standing in front of a camera and I found that there was a technique that I learned, which I use nowadays, which is just as annoying when it comes to editing my podcast is instead of saying, um, I just stopped talking. <laughs> I just paused for a moment. And the yeah. more I practiced that, and then I got to see, okay, here's the thing. Yes, I've never done a podcast, but the tool that is Instagram, I think has been a huge help in formulating my thoughts and being able to communicate, uh, clearly and, uh, what seems to be effortlessly, but I'm telling you, man, there's so much dead space in, in the episode that I just released in that six and a half, seven minute episode yeah. uh, where I just literally sit there and go, yep, there's dead space. There's dead space. Take it all out. Um, yeah, but people don't so, see that, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't see your computer right. while you're editing. Right. Well, and that's a thought that I had today. I was listening to your, um, your daily, um, I don't even remember what you were calling it, but you try to get the word started, but your daily podcasts. Yeah. Uh, and it was, uh, sorry for yawning <laughs> that episode where it was like the end of the day and yeah. it was like, you're recording it at 1130 at night. And I'm thinking to myself, Jesus, I would never do this because I know that's another 30 to 45 minutes of editing that he has to do before he can actually release that episode. Like that episode, it was, it was more, it was dirty. You just threw the music on and threw it out there. You exactly. Totally Daryl Perry. Uh, love you, pal. Um, but that's intentional yeah. though. I, I don't mean to cut you off. Right. That's intentional. Like right. I, here's the thing. I know that like, I, you know, people tell me, okay, I love the podcast. I love the way it sounds, blah, blah, blah. I love, I appreciate that. But mm -hmm. there is very intentionalness to the rawness of this podcast. Like, you know, could I edit a lot more and make it even more, you know, um, very like, ugh, just very tight. Yes. Yeah. But there's a part of me because I am very much rough around the edges, like nothing I have ever done would I ever think to be like super perfect. Or, I mean, nobody's perfect, but like, you know, super great high end, like uh, the, what do they call it? Top shelf. Like when you're thinking liquor, like, nope, mm -hmm. like I never think of it like that. Like I want the podcast to have this element of roughness. I was talking to this guy probably, God, 2002. So that's like 17 years ago or something like that. There's this guy, Dave, he played in this band called the June spirit. And he's like, you know, you know, I was telling him how much I loved his, his music. And he's like, you know, yeah, but a lot of people say, ah, oh, you know, um, on our records, it sounds very rough, but that was intentional. We did that on purpose because we didn't want to go in the studio right. and make it sound perfect. And then when we do it live, not be able to replicate that. So it's I'm like so much more disappointing, right? So across the board, I'm like, just make it rough around the edges. And the people that listen, the people that fuck with me, like they're going to get it. They're going to enjoy it. And the people yeah. that won't, that's fine. I'm not doing this for them, but there, are, I think there are people that can pop in and say, okay, I, I get what he's trying to do here. And that's the yeah. ultimate goal. Yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's, mm, man, see, this is why I love surrounding myself with people like you, <laughs> like our, our circle of, of friends. Um, an episode that I, that I just recorded that I still have to edit is, uh, the, how toxic I think personally, the constant positivity movement is on, on Instagram and right. on social media, just all around yeah. where everything is good and nothing's ever bad. And, and no one ever has a bad day. Like my thing is, as, as you know, my, I am completely transparent. I'm as transparent as I can like allow myself to be, which the more I do it, the more, the easier it becomes. So, because I've had, I've had people come to me and go, Hey, you know, you posted that you had a really crappy day or you posted that you had, you know, you were worried about, <clears throat> 
you were worried about, um, you know, this, this win. All right, here we go. Rabbit trail. So this sound booth for me, I will probably put this episode out by the time you are airing this. So I'm not too worried, even if I don't. I was at the end of the day, I was sitting in the sound booth and I was just looking at it. And there was a moment where I should have been like super proud of myself. Right. I had this overwhelming fear that this win, this huge win by any stretch, uh, by, by any measurement was just a manic episode because this is what my manic episodes have looked like in the past. What with having bipolar disorder is uh, coming up with this idea and then just executing it almost the next day. Cause it's basically what this was. You know, my dad and I've been talking about building a sound booth in the house somewhere, somehow not knowing how, not knowing where. And, uh, I dipped my toe in the podcast world. I threw up a makeshift sound booth in in my, in my closet and went, you know what? All right, let's do it. And then I did. So posting things like that, uh, I've had more people come to me and be like, yo, I can relate. I thank you. I'm not alone. And I get the whole, to bring it back around, I get the whole like constant positivity. The idea is to bring positivity into the world by being positive but it creates such unrealistic expectations. So in the same way that, yeah, you are rough around the edges with your podcast. Like I didn't even think of it like that. (laughs) Um, I, I like, I post the raw and I post the dirty and I post the real because like, that's well, that's life. You have to, Now I wouldn't, I wouldn't. And again, I love you, pal. Go as far as Daryl Perry does though. Like, I think you and I are on one side of, of the, the argument. Oh, that would be a fun, that would be a fun little podcast to have. He's already uh, got a book. You and I are on. <laughs> <laughs> it's already you booked. And I are on one, yeah, right? You and I are on one side of the, some editing, some, uh, 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 music and stuff like that. And he's just like, yeah, no, cool. It's done. <laughs> I don't know if you listen to my interview on his podcast. Yes. It started out. In the beginning, there was the technical difficulties. I was sitting in my car and I could hear myself speak. It was a probably like a five or seven second delay. And I was like, I can't like I'm I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to be able to do this the whole time yep. if I have to fight through that. And he was just like, nah, whatever. Yeah. Like, no, this we, is life. We had audio problems one time. Uh, we did a we did an in person thing and we were in yeah. we were in a restaurant and I had a mic set up. Oh. And I was just like, yo, you know, you got to get up on that mic. And he was like, uh, he's like, ah, I think it sounds good. You know, it's fine. And I'm like, I ah, just, just get up on the mic oh, a little bit no. closer. It, it turned out fine. I mean, there's it, it, it no yeah. complaints, but I just, you know, I think he has a way and there's nothing wrong with his way. I just have mm-hmm. my way and everybody, everybody's, everybody's happy. You know, we all have our different right. philosophies on it. Well, and I definitely like, cause I know he's going to be listening and other people are going to be listening. Yeah. I'm not beating up on him. No. I think that there is something only for fun. Completely beautiful. What's that? I said only for fun. Do we beat up on Daryl? <laughs> well, yeah, naturally <laughs> speaking, speaking, speaking of which you, Joey and him this morning, Joey released that podcast. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, that was amazing. I literally had to pull over cause I thought I was going to crash. I was listening to you guys on the way to work. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> it was amazing, dude. Thank you. Uh, no, there is something so completely beautiful in the uh, chaos that is the way that he does this stuff. Yes. You know, I think I think that there is beauty in having structure and organization, and then there is beauty in just letting. I was having this conversation with my dad. You know, really good interviewers know when to just kind of take a step back and let what's happening happen. And as you know from interviewing random people off of Instagram. You know, you can have a direction when, when it comes to talking to someone, but people are just going to kind of do what they want to do. And sometimes that is beautiful. So, yeah, yeah. You can never, you can never predict this stuff. And that's why I, I, I go this route. Like, I mean, I'll tell you what, like I used to interview famous people. I, I used to do a wrestling uh, radio show slash podcast. I was interviewing famous people all the time and there was a certain formula right. to it. And you kind of knew mm-hmm. like, you know, you play the hits as they say in the music world, you play all the favorite hits, AKA you ask, you know, the same questions over and over again. Um, obviously the right answer is not to do that, but I didn't know that at the time I was just kind of getting my feet right. wet with the 
the whole thing. Uh, but with this, I like this because yes, it is a taped podcast, but it's like, you know, if I didn't, if we had not talked prior to today, the, the thing is I would hit call. You would answer the phone. I'd be like, yo, what's up, man? You'd be like, yo, what's up, man? We'd start talking. I'm like, I don't know what you're going to say. Like, I don't know where you're, where you're coming from on anything. Like, I don't know anything, but there's beauty right. in that. Because I can't predict yeah. that, and yeah. I just I leave it all in, you know. So in that aspect, I I don't do a lot of edit. I only edit like coughs or like little blips in the audio. Like the actual conversation, it stays very very much intact. Right. You know? Yeah. Um. That's actually I mentioned today to you that that's one of the things that I'm still nervous about when it comes to my podcast. I have like 10 episodes already banked because you and I have talked about doing that, uh, yep. which I appreciate the the suggestion that definitely takes a lot of uh, pressure off. And I want to have ideally by the first of the year, I want to have like five interviews done. Uh, but first of all, that kind of kills like my little circle of our, our little circle of podcast people. Like that's five. That's you. That's Joey. That's Willie. That's Daryl. Yep. Uh, that's Kayla. Um, and then there's Dan from big fat. Like, Oh podcast. yeah. Dan. Yeah. You know, oh, he's straight I, I ass money. Your, oh, I love him. I listened to your interview with him while I was uh, working. What was it last week? It was one of your older interviews. Yeah. I don't know. You were on his show. Yep. So it was something like that. But just like mm, listening to you two just riff off of each other is brilliant. So, yeah, I want to have like five interviews in the books uh, plus another 10 episodes just banked up. But like, there's that, there's an idea for a podcast. There's that, that fear that I let hold me back, even though like, I know it's going to, there's going to be fumbles, but there's fumbles with every, anything. Of course. Um, so I just need to, uh, I, I promised Kayla that she was going to be the first one on. Uh, oh man. She's a, it. she's an awesome chat for sure. Isn't she? She's a wonderful <laughs> human being. And I know she's going to be listening. So, hey, Kayla, I love you. I appreciate everything you do. I, to um, I told her this, and I hope she doesn't mind that I share it here. But, like, I told her, like, after the our podcast, that was one of the favorite, one of my favorite podcasts mm -hmm. that in nearly 13 years of doing this that I had ever taped, mm -hmm. ever. I had that much fun with her. She was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and she's just an incredible human being. Yeah. She's fun to talk to. And her wife, like I've gotten to know her, her wife too, which is awesome. Um, yeah, they are both they're both incredible people. She was on uh, Dumpster Fire with oof, with Willie. That yes, was fun. that was a lot of fun. Um, she's actually the reason. Uh, she is the reason that you and I connected. Yeah, is that how we if did? If I it? remember, yeah, you you put a call. If I remember correctly, yeah, uh, my short term memory is horrible, much like yours, as you've mentioned. Um, <laughs> You put a call out because you want to make 2020 kick ass, which you're obviously going to do. You're already well on your way. Working uh, on it. And you, you, you're already there. <laughs> um, <laughs> you put a call out to, uh, see if there was someone that people wanted on that you've not had on yet. And she, first person she commented was me. Yeah. It's amazing. And I know Willie was in there too. He was commenting a lot. I, he might have dropped your name as well. It might have been the both of them. Willie to be did fair. drop my name, which actually, so I was listening uh, to, I, I binge listen to whomever uh, was podcast I, I'm, I'm going on to. Yeah. Um, which, because I'm also trying to practice something that Daryl and I talked about is I'm trying to practice listening to podcasts passively instead of actively. Uh, so at work all day, I had my, my headphones on and you were in my, my head all day, um, which could be worse. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? See, look, there's a fumble. There's a real life. fumble. Well, while you're, while you're collecting the thought, I will say normally yeah. when I have people on, they haven't even had a chance to listen to the podcast yet. So they come on and like, I don't do, I don't do like the intro on the recording. I've added intros now. Um, you haven't heard this. Nobody's heard this yet. Cause the first year hasn't come, mm -hmm. but I've revamped the format a little bit. And so now I do intros. Um, but, uh, you know, people, when I'd come on the phone with them, I don't, I don't do all that. We just start talking and people were like, Hey, are we, are we, are we recording? Are we, are we doing the podcast? Like 15 minutes and Hey, are we doing the podcast? <laughs> yeah. We've been doing it the last 15 minutes. Like, <laughs> hope you didn't say nothing you didn't want to say. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. So you were, I don't remember who you were talking to, but you were upset because, uh, Willie grabbed someone before you, um, 
uh, because Daryl obviously grabs everyone before anyone else because he turns it around in two hours and, and puts yeah, out the podcast. That is true. So <laughs> I will officially, I will officially say, despite the fact that this is going to be released after uh, you uh, interviewed me before Willie, I'm supposed to be talking to Willie on Sunday. Oh yeah, his. I, I think he's taping for January right now, so his will definitely oh, come out he? first. I think. I think. I don't know okay. that. The last time I saw one of his stories where he talked about it, it was stuff for January. So, okay. um, yeah. yeah, you'll be you'll be there, and then a couple weeks later, you'll be on here. And you know what? It's, it, 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 when I say something like that, like I'm not actually like pissed off or anything. Like, there's a lot of oh, people yeah, that no do doubt. the. There's a lot of people that are doing this format, and and I think it's cool because. The way he'll talk to you, the way Daryl talk to you won't be the way I talk to you. And the way that I talk to you won't be the way that they talk to you and vice versa. So for people that are like really number one, that are invested in perhaps all three of our podcasts, speaking of me, mm-hmm. Daryl, uh, Willie, um, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to get a different perspective of the same person, I think, uh, which mm-hmm. is, which, well, is, which is fascinating. And, and I'm going to bring her name up again, uh, which she's going to yell at me for doing, but that's one of the things that Kayla said, because she, yeah. she made the rounds in our little circle before I was a part of our little circle. Um, actually she's the reason why basically everyone has reached out and talked to me and I've reached out and talked to them. Um, so, and that's one of the things that she said, she, you know, you know, she said it was really cool that, you know, Joey was able to grab something different. Uh, you were able to grab something different. You know what though? Uh, her podcast, the so people would have already heard her podcast by now. Cause it aired like two weeks before this one came out. Right. And I think, I think we got something even vastly different from what they got. So I, we went, and we right. went, we went pretty, pretty deep. So, uh, it was, it was a great chat. That's something that Daryl was talking about. Um, that, you know, the only thing that you bring different and I bring different and he brings different and Willie brings different is us. Yep. You know, so like we're all doing the same exact thing. We're all eventually going to be interviewing the same exact people, but, you know, bringing us uh, makes it different and makes it ours, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's why, that's why I look at it. I don't look at it like any sort of competition or anything because we're mm-hmm. all going to pull something different. Now, if we were all sitting here asking the same 10 questions, okay, yeah, God, I need to get this person, right. need, you know, but that's not, that's not what's going on here now. I mean, the only thing on that's on me a hundred percent it's on me is that I, maybe I'm not as outgoing as those two. And I think that they like, they just message anybody and everybody. And I'm a little more reserved because I am, I am very much introverted, even though when I get comfortable with you, the introvert, and this goes away. Um, but it, but yeah. So, but this year I'm trying to, I'm trying to like move past that and, and, you know, I'm going to start pulling that first DM on some people and they're not going to expect it, you know? Um, but, uh, for the longest time, that was a big problem, you know, cause I go in my stories, Hey, anybody want to come on? Anybody would come on. You get one or two messages and then I'd be mm-hmm. sitting there for weeks. Like, God damn, I got to get something going, man. I, I'm going to run out of episodes and there's all this anxiety. Mm-hmm. And then at some point you just got to grab yourself by the freaking collar and like, yo, you need to make this shit happen. Like they, right. they're not all just going to come to you. Maybe they want to do it, but they didn't, they didn't read your story because they just skipped past it. Or maybe they, you know, it could be a hundred reasons why they didn't respond to your story and they actually wanted to do it. You just got to go out you got to reach out and grab it. So I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more of that this year for sure. Definitely. Well, that's, first of all, that's exciting. Uh, I'm going to hold you to it. Um, and one of the, you Please know, do. one of the things that, Absolutely. Oh, 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 you're going to regret that. (laughs) Uh, One of the things that I noticed, you know, going through stories and I would see the call, you know, anyone want to be on the podcast? The first thing that I would think is, man, I'm not interesting enough. I'm just going to, there's no reason. That is the exact response I get every single time. Right. I'm not interesting enough. Why me? You know? And then you guys are able to, you specifically are able to bring people on and just pull out things from them that I I don't even think they knew was there, you know? Yeah, oh yeah. That's, that's my favorite thing is, you know, an hour in, I'm like, Hey, you realize we've done an hour already. And these are people that said they had nothing to talk about. There's one that's getting ready to come mm-hmm. out on Christmas. Um, and I know we're, I know we're in February. God, I keep, I keep mentioning the date and it's going to screw people up, but you know what? It's, it's all about context. There's a, right. there, there's a gal that's coming out on Wednesday, Elizabeth. And she was like, you know, I don't think anybody's going to hear about me. We went like an hour 45 and she straight fucking Jeez. killed it. She straight that's killed amazing. it. Amazing. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you think people aren't going to want to hear about all this? Like you got another thing coming. I'm like, I'm telling her she should do a podcast. Now I'm doing the Daryl thing. I'm like, Hey, you should do a podcast. You should, <laughs> you should do a podcast. Um, because there are people that you hear that like, they think they have nothing to talk about or they think they're not interesting and they come out and just drop straight fire. 
Yeah. Well, that's I've got an episode. I've got an episode lined up uh, where it's just going to be discussing like the lies that we tell ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and I will absolutely have this one posted before this episode comes out because I kind of want it to be a secret uh, on how I'm doing it. But what I did is I put a call out on my story. What are some of the lies that you tell yourself? Right. And then I had the people that responded record themselves saying their lie. Ooh, I like that. Right. So I'm going to utilize that in the podcast. And then the finisher, because one of the biggest lies that we tell ourselves, especially when we are deep in, deep in, in the shit, um, is that we're alone. So yes. the finisher for the whole podcast is every single person that was willing to, and every single person that reached out, I had them record themselves saying that you are not alone. Yeah. No, so that's, very you know, true. that's, that's, and I still struggle with telling myself lies like, Hey, I'm not going to be good at interviewing people, for example. Um, so that's, I'm one, I'm really, really excited for that episode, but two, I think that's going to be a really valuable tool for a lot of people. So and it's, and it's, it's such a, a, you know, such an interesting point too. It's like, you know, we do tell ourselves, I mean, I tell myself all the time, like stuff like, Oh God, you're never going to make anything of this, you know, uh, 13 years, you still haven't done shit. Who the hell are you? And it's like, right. but you still, you take a pause. You're like, all right, just keep, you know, breathe, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's not yep. over yet. So yeah, we tell ourselves lies all the time. And that's, you know, one of the, one of the things that I was talking about on Joey's podcast is if you find the small wins and you celebrate them, like you just won the lottery, then it's a lot easier to look through the lies, to see through the lies, because, you know, I could, uh, my, the episode I, re I released yesterday, oh man, we are going to mess people up. So just so everyone knows it's 1223 today. Sorry to pull back the curtain completely. Yeah. We're recording this on De December 23rd. So the episode that I released today, I was talking about, um, It's gonna be one of those parts that you edit out because I cannot think at all. Oh, it's it stays in. Sorry. Oh, it does. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> Here's the real me. Yeah. Here's where I edit my podcast because I'll sit here and go, "What was I talking about?" That's what I want um, to. I want the real you on here. Like you know, you know, you'll oh. go on your podcast and you'll chop a bunch of shit up, and that's fine. I think people still get the real you. People yeah. still get the real you, but I like you know all this stuff. It just it just stays right in. What were we just talking about? It's the heat of the sound. Well it's, it, it well, it's not the lies we tell ourselves. I know that podcast is not out yet. Let me, I'll tell you what, I'll look no. on Spotify. I'll tell you. I'm sure it's in the description, correct? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. There's your mug right there. Let's talk about this podcast. Welcome to the first official episode of our podcast. Let's talk about it. I, this is all paragraph here. Holy shit. Okay. Not, nice plug, by the way, pal. Thank yeah. <laughs> Um, things I am not a doctor, a dietitian, an expert. There you go. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot here. I mean, I could read this whole thing, but it, there's nothing in here. It just says the title of it is let's talk about this podcast. If that helps. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, we were talking about the lies that we tell ourselves and how we're boring. Uh, yeah. there we go. Hey, we're back. Boom. Um, so <laughs> what I was talking about is that like my day to day is boring. Like it's so incredibly boring. I do same. the same thing over and over and over and yeah. over again. Um, so like for someone to come to me and be like, yo, Hey, your life is interesting. I want you to come on my podcast and talk about it. Uh, what? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll give it a shot. No, it's, it's very true. I mean, look that I, I, I look at my every day and I'm like, what, you know, there's nothing here. There's nothing to talk about, yeah. but if you mm -hmm. look at it in the bigger picture, because people tend to look at the micro picture where you're just looking at the short term day to day to day. If you look at the big picture and everything you've done there, there's a lot to talk about there. If you want to talk yeah, about well, and that's, it. Right. And that's, well, that's the hard thing, but that's like, you know, looking at weight loss, um, you can't really see, or at least I can't really see when I'm losing weight because I look at myself every day. I look at myself every single day. So the minor changes day to day, you can't really see it. But then if I were to pull, pull up a picture from myself uh, 10 years ago, it's obvious. So well, yeah. speaking of which, you've lost over 300 pounds for crying. I mean, this is a good thing. We're on video, so I can give you the virtual fist bump there. That's insane, oh, brother. Got it. That is insane. I appreciate you. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. 
Uh, well, I was just going to dive into, uh, I used to say I was, I, my peak was 700 pounds, but I actually don't officially know how, how, how much I weighed at the top right. and talking to Dan on the big fat life podcast, the way that he put it, uh, which is absolutely beautiful. And I've, I've taken it from him, uh, because it's mine. It's mine now. It um, is yours. Is that <laughs> I was approaching 700 pounds. I know I was above 650 pounds because the scale, the strongest scale I ever stepped on went up to 650 pounds and I stepped on it and it went, what? <laughs> you know, it, it cannot compute. So like I knew I was above 650. Uh, I just approximated that I was about 700. I, <clears throat> here's the thing. I, I got up to about 400. I know it at some point mm -hmm. went over four but the first recorded weight I ever saw was around like 380. And so I know the pain that I was in at around four, like, you know, just getting out of bed, the pain that shoots up from mm -hmm. your feet all the way to your back and everything. But as you're, as you say, approaching 700, that's got to be a, a completely different story altogether. Um, so, I mean, just tell me even just like an example of like a day for you, just an average day of getting up and doing whatever, you know, going to work or what have you when you're at that size. So, and that's, that's actually really interesting because I would listen to someone like Gormy or I would listen to someone like Willie and they would talk about, um, how hard life was for me. It wasn't, it really wasn't like super, super difficult. Like obviously, yeah, getting up out of bed, I'd be winded. I would get winded, but then I would just kind of go along with my day. I think, uh, uh, I got re I got really, really lucky. Like, um, just health wise, I should probably be dead. Like, right. let's be honest. Let's call it what it is. I should probably be dead. I should have diabetes. I should have a myriad of health issues. Um, I think I just got really, really, really lucky, uh, in that I have a second chance. Um, so yeah, like getting out of bed, I would have to do the whole, like, hold my breath to, to bend over and tie my shoes or pull my socks on or, you know, do anything. And, Oh man, going to try on clothes was my least favorite thing in the world because by the time I was done putting on a pair of jeans, I would literally be covered in sweat. Um, but like the day to day, other than, other than not being able to do things very fast or very well when it came to the physical stuff, it really wasn't much different. Yeah. I think, uh, the other, the other part of it is the fact that I was young. Like I, I've, I've always been much like you. I've always been that, that chubby kid. Well, chubby doesn't really describe it in my case. Um, but I was, I've always been overweight. I think there was a time when I was like nine or 10 when I was on ADHD medicine that totally, like totally cut my appetite, um, that yeah. I had lost a decent amount, but I was still overweight. And as soon as I was off that medication, the weight just went back on. Um, I was on that before and because yeah, uh, and because it was, it was the weight gain for the most part was gradual. I think my body had time to catch up. Um, but yeah, like it was just, everything was a lot harder to do. And, uh, I was usually covered in sweat doing your mundane stuff. Uh, dishes sucked though. Basically anything that required my back to support my stomach, uh, was horrible. Yeah. They, could you, could you drive in all that? Like, is there, was there a vehicle that would hold you up or? Uh, I, so my first car was a 1992 Toyota pickup manual transmission. My dad bought it from my uncle. Uh, no, my mm -hmm. dad bought it from my cousin who bought it from his father, my uncle. Uh, and then my dad gave it to me. I drove that for about a year. Uh, and then, uh, I grew, I, I was too big to drive it. Yeah. We had to, we traded it for an Isuzu Rodeo, uh, same year, um, that then died like a year later. My dad, my dad traded it because I couldn't fit in the truck anymore. Yeah. And I mean, as you're, <clears throat> you know, it's probably, you know, it's probably a lot easier to think about now as opposed to, you know, at the time, but like how many years do you think accumulated to get to that weight? I mean, like when you're, when you're a little boy, are you like the chubby boy? Or are you kind of just like in the middle somewhere? Like, where does this, where does this ascension, you know, kind of, kind of go up here? Um, well, the peak was 18 years old. So basically from the time that I could feed myself until I was 18, yeah, yeah I've, I've, I've always been overweight. There's not been a time in my life where on 
the uh, scale, I wasn't overweight. Yeah. So yeah, it's it was like like I said, it was it was gradual for the most part. Um, but like it was it was the summers, man. Like summers summers killed me because you you were off of school, dad was working, so there was no one home to uh, monitor or police. Uh, I think one summer I probably gained like a hundred pounds. But like that's that's the thing that's the thing that I'm envious uh, of a lot of people that I follow on Instagram because like my buddy my buddy Dusty lost three hundred. He uh, he has pictures and he has videos and he has like he has his timeline down because it's only been like thirteen months that he's been doing it uh, and he's been rocking it. Um, but like me, because it's been nine almost ten years now, there's a lot of it that one I don't remember. And two, like, I just, I don't know the timeline, which breaks my heart. But at the same time, you know, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it now. Right, right. What, um, I guess like what, what you remember, like what kind of food you were eating? I mean, was it just like just massive amounts per day? Like, you know, five, 6,000 calories, that kind of stuff. Anything and everything. Soda. Um, oh yeah, that's a big one. Uh, right. Soda, soda was, I was putting down. Like a twelve pack and a half a day, easy. Wow. Um, but yeah, anything and everything that I could, I would eat. You know, there was. You were talking about how you would, uh, on your way home, you would stop by uh, McDonald's and you would order what is it, a medium shake, uh, four piece, uh, and then like two sandwiches, and then you go yeah. home and then eat. Yep. Um, my my typical. <laughs> I remember actually how appropriate. I remember there was one Christmas Eve. Where I was like, mm, I need to go get like, I need to eat, like I need food. So I was gonna do the whole like, uh, go to McDonald's for the fries, go to Burger King for the Whopper, go to Wendy's for the uh, the Frosty, and then go to Taco Bell just for the hell of it. And I got to the the McDonald's and they were closed, and I was so pissed off because I totally forgot it was Christmas Eve at like nine o'clock at night. They were closed. Everything was closed. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they still use those practices, but this was back when like places actually shut down for Christmas Eve. Um, but my typical McDonald's order would be, oh man, a 20 piece nugget ranch with extra ranch. And I would use all of it. Two double quarter pounders with cheese, uh, two cheeseburgers, a large fry, a large milkshake, and like two or three Cokes was my, my typical like $25, $30 order at McDonald's. That's what that's, <laughs> I love that you went right there. That's exactly where I wanted to go with that. The financial impact of that. And, and we can get to like the greater, you know, kind of impact financially that, that, you know, this kind of yeah. behavior leads to, cause I can certainly attest to it. Um, it's insane. Yeah. So you were talking like $25, $30 and what frequency were you talking about? Was this every day, every other day? Like how often were you going? Um, I would, I would do that binge like twice, maybe three times a week. Okay. So that's not, in, not, that's not including my quote unquote regular McDonald's order, you know, which now is what's a regular, yeah, what's a regular order, two sandwiches, uh, fries, a uh, four piece, if I could, if I could swing it, uh, and then like two, two sodas. So not much different, <laughs> Yeah. but like, I didn't, I didn't get the shake, you know, I didn't get the shake. I didn't get the, the extra drinks. Uh, you know, it wasn't the, the creme de la creme. I'm going to eat until I feel like I'm going to explode kind of thing. Did you ever have the, uh, the, like the meal before the meal where you're like, okay, well, you know, I'm driving home. I want to have this meal at home. So I need to get this food that I can eat in the car on the way home. So that way, when I get home, I can have this other food. You ever do that? Oh, dude, that was my meal. That was my meal before the meal. Okay. Like that, that absurd amount of food yep. was my meal before the meal. I would go home and like my grandmother would have food or my father would have food or, you know, my dad would, he was a single father. So he'd be like, all right, Hey, I brought pizza home. And I'm like, all right, cool. You only brought one. What are you guys going to eat? Like <sighs> not yeah. joking either, you know, um, which was, was something strange to think about. Now, if I eat a chicken breast, so my normal daily food is like three chicken breasts and some meatloaf. If I eat a chicken breast while at work. Like I can, I'll, I'll, I can feel full, which is crazy to think that I used to eat five to six times that much and still not feel uncomfortably full. I would then go home and eat more, which I can't even fathom now. Yeah. It's, it's crazy when we think about it now, you know, that we have gotten ourselves in a different situation. You think back to where you were and the amount that mm -hmm. you would eat and, you know, 
Mm -hmm. I would be absolutely lying if I came on this podcast and said, you know, every, you know, every couple of months, you know, there's a day that I don't have, you know, some semblance of that because, you know, you have like a bad day or something and this behavior will pop in for a day, like every couple of months I, ha I have it, but now I'm ready for that. So now I go to like the healthier stuff. I'm like, okay, well, instead of that hell of a good dip, I'm going to do guacamole because it's all like natural yeah. shit. It's not a perfect right. answer, but it's like, it's like trying to find other things to combat, you know, kind of where I was before. Um, but it's rough, man. I mean, it, you know, when you think about kind of where we come from that it's, it's, I know it initially, you know, like just getting started, it was tough, like in that transition. And what was that like for you as you, you're finally saying, okay, I need to make a change, but you're eating this much. And then you transition to eating less. Like, what is that? What does that transit? What does that transition look like for you? Um, well, at first it was uh, cut out soda or, or transition to diet soda. That was yeah. a huge thing. Like I know you had your five and I know soda was one of those five. Um, so yeah, soda for me, getting rid of soda was a massive thing. The next step was just not eating, uh, enough to feed three people at one time. Yeah. You yeah. know? Um, and then after that, my, my whole, my whole journey, my whole process has been very, 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 very gradual. It, I tried to avoid the extremes, um, and that's been true since the beginning. So everything has been very gradual. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't going from, uh, uh, 6,000 calories or 7,000 and probably closer to 10,000 calories a day to, uh, dropping down to 2000 calories. <laughs> it was, uh, what I now know to be quite a healthy drop, uh, and a slow drop. Um, so yeah, it, the big thing though was soda, man, like, oh, I could, there was a time where I didn't drink water. I just didn't drink yeah. water. I drank soda and, and a, a gross amount of it too. But do you still have a days here and there where you have, you know, kind of, uh, do you ever have that urge again? Not 10,000 obviously, but like, do you ever have the urge to want to, you know, go, go ham oh, every day, every day, every day, every single day, every single day. Uh, how, how do you, you know, combat word, that though? I have my whys and just, just so we're clear, like I haven't, I haven't talked about this on Instagram yet. I, I kind of hinted to it at a podcast that I'm recording by the time this is out, I will have already talked about it the past week and a half to two weeks. I've been off plan. Yeah. Like I've been eating things that I'm not supposed to eat. I think I've gained like 10 pounds or so. And I haven't been to the gym in like five days, five or six days, which is crazy. Unlike me. Um, which brings me pause and concern that, uh, again, the whole, the whole, I built a booth in a day, you know, is, is that, is, is there uh, a correlation between those two things? Am I going manic and what's going to happen afterwards? So uh, living, living in a house with other people, uh, that do not eat the way I do, I am tempted every single day, but the way that I combat it is I have my whys. I have my two whys, uh, which I talked about this on, Dan's podcast, you know, everyone talks about finding your why you have to find your why you have to find your reason. And I completely believe that. But I also feel like when people talk about the why they talk about it in a sense where it's an absolute and like there's only one. Yeah, and I don't agree with that. You know, I find that what I have found works for me. My formula is to have two whys. You have an internal why one that cannot be taken away from you and you have an external why one that can. Uh, my external why is my nephew. I want to be the absolute best I can be for my nephew. That way he can look at me when he gets older and be proud of me and that, um, he can come to me and feel safe to be vulnerable. And, uh, basically trying my drive is to make the world a better place so that he can have the best life that he can. Um, that is my external why. And unfortunately the reality is, uh, one way or another, there is the potential that he could be taken away from me. Knock on wood, may it never happen. Um, my internal why, the why that cannot be taken away from me is avoiding, uh, the depressive states or going dark as I call it. I have found that, um, my sugar intake and my, uh, mood destabilization, um, have a, a direct correlation there. There is a, I, I I'm working with a hypothesis now, um, because I experiment on myself to try and have a normal life. 
Yeah. Uh, but I'm working with a, a hypothesis now, and there has been some studies that have, that are backing it up uh, that sugar uh, creates brain inflammation, and brain inflammation um, has a direct uh, or the again the hypothesis that that, that they're working with brain inflammation. Uh, can cause uh, mental health issues. And I have found for me that when I abstain from sugar, keep it like below six grams a day, I don't have those mood swings. I don't have issues. I haven't gone, I haven't gone dark. I haven't gone into a depression in over a year. That's great. Right. Uh, because I haven't taken in sugar. I was doing really strict carnivore for a while. And when I wasn't doing carnivore, I would do keto. I would do a strict keto. Uh, but then, yeah, like the past week and a half, two weeks, uh, I've been, and it's little things like, um, there were, there were, uh, and I don't want a trigger warning. I don't want to trigger anyone, but there were fresh baked cookies in the house and I can usually just walk past them. It's not going to bother me, but there was just something about it where I took five and then that five turned into 10 and then that 10 turned into, oh, I took 10 more the next day. Yep. And then that 10 turned into, oh, I took five more. And then that five turned into, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. So I'm going to burn it off uh, because, you know, I'm depleted from glycogen despite the fact that I've been eating sugar for two days. Um, so that's my excuse. I'm going to go to the gym so I can eat these cookies. That turned into five more. I think my grand total after three days was like 40 cookies wow. plus, uh, uh, you know, three, four, five scoops of ice cream throughout this whole thing. Um Plus there's Nutella in the kitchen, which is just dangerous no matter who you are. Um, so like, and that goes back to the sugar addiction that I have as well. Like opening, opening that door just a little bit, uh, is so dangerous for me because that, that addiction kicks back in and it gets to a point where unless I really check in with myself, which I have in the past two days, um, unless I really check in with myself, uh, that usually ends up turning into a binge. Yeah. And, you know, I, th I think, uh, you're absolutely right. The door opening that door is dangerous, but I think also for people like us that have lost, you know, a lot of weight and you a lot more than, I mean, you've lost a lot of weight. Um, there is this kind of, um, uh, this kind of feeling at times to want to test yourself a little bit and see kind of like, okay, well, you know, I've lost a hundred, I've lost 200, whatever it is, you know, let me see like how I handle this situation, there's nothing right. wrong with it. It's just like you right. said, being aware of what's going on. And at some point you just kind of snap yourself out of it. And, you know, having a bad day or a week is not going to derail two years of progress or a year of progress or whatever. You know, as long as you get it back on the rails, you know, relatively soon, you're going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. And I think people lose sight of that because they think, you know, maybe they did have a like a like a, a binge or a near binge like you're talking about, like with the cookies. And they're like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. oh, everything's shot. I've lost all my progress. Everything's gone to hell. I've gained five pounds. And in reality, that that some of that is just water weight. that's going to go off after you take your next dump. Like it's just these are right. just realities. Um, but I think we do like to test ourselves a little bit at times and see well, like and what we can handle. That's where the term experimenting on myself, you know, comes in. Yeah. I, I did. Uh, it, it was, it wasn't a long lasting one, but I've always been curious because, uh, in my Instagram bio, my goal weight is, do you take steroids? The question, do you take steroids? <laughs> I love it. Um, because I want to pack on as much muscle as I can naturally, uh, on, onto my body. So, you know, one of the things that uh, everyone in the bodybuilding world says is, you know, carbs, carbs help build muscle. So there was a, it was a very short lived experiment because I determined that it really didn't make a difference. In fact, it kind of got in the way where I started <coughs> eating sweet potatoes before I went to the gym. Yeah. Like 50 grams of sweet potatoes, um, just to see what happened. And like I said, it, I didn't notice any difference. Uh, and in fact, I noticed that I was very spacey in the gym. So I just kind of, I, I stopped. Um, but for me, actually, so I had, I had the cookies the, the, the first day I had the five cookies and I literally started to have a panic attack because, yeah. uh, the, the overwhelming fear of going dark. Like there's a, there's a highlight on my Instagram, um, about my bipolar depression and what it feels like to have it and what it feels like to go dark. It's terrifying. Like it's, uh, it, at a point it feels like, uh, I'm, I'm in the back seat and someone else is driving the car. Oh yeah. 
and and that ooh, yeah that's that's terrifying so my my internal why is avoiding that as long as i can and because the hypothesis that i'm working with is that sugar intake causes depression like i ate those cookies while eating them knowing i shouldn't be eating them after eating them knowing i shouldn't have eaten them had a panic attack and then ate more yeah because i was having a panic attack you know so like for me like i I feel like, and I don't want to sound like a martyr, but I feel like for me, you know, going off plan as of right now with the hypothesis that I'm working with is a little more dangerous than most. But yeah, I think a lot of people forget, like I'm, I'm sitting here, been off plan for two weeks and I'm not, you know, I'm not dead. I'm, I'm, I'm fine for the most part. Um, yeah. but that's the whole, like you said, being hyper aware of what's going on internally is really the only I've had a lot of people reach out and say, Hey, I want to try experimenting. I want to try this. I want to try that. I saw that you did it. And the first question is, uh, okay, how aware of yourself are you? Yeah. Because, because if you're not, if you are not hyper aware of what's going on, that's how, that's how you get in trouble. That's how, you know, I, that's how I've gone dark in the past. Oh, I want to try this experiment, but I didn't have these check-ins. I didn't have these, these red flags. I didn't have these tools that I now have to where I can go, okay, this isn't working. I need to stop right now. Yeah. No. And I, you know, I, because we're around the holidays, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, it's the holidays. Don't let it wreck all your Mm -hmm. progress. And I, I, I am on the complete opposite of that. I'm like, you know what, especially around Thanksgiving, I did a podcast where it's like, you know, do whatever you want. Like if you want to, if you plate instead of three, yeah. You know, if you want to cut back on Thanksgiving, cut back. If you want to eat whatever you want on Thanksgiving, eat whatever you want. It comes back right. to what you're talking about, you know, being aware. And if you have that sense of it, then you can, you can, you can do whatever you want. Like you don't need to listen to somebody online, tell you, don't let it ruin all your progress. It's not going to, one day it's not going to ruin anything. The holiday season right. in general, you know, it's, it's a kind of a stretch, like a month or so where there's mm-hmm. going to be kind of these temptations and, you know, rather than restricting um, I think it's better to be aware and make choices. And, you know, if you want to let yourself have the, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, it's fine. You know, just so long as you're not, you know, completely going off the rails for months and months and months at a time, you know, I think that there is right. a difference. I think you can do these things, uh, with, within some level of, of control, take this year, for instance, 2020, this is, this is something that's happening that I'm doing in 2020. When people hear it, it's already happening for a month now. So we can all be the judge (laughs) a month in where I'm at, but I listed, it's like a time capsule. It really is. Uh, so saying this is going to be interesting because we're going to see where we're at and I'm not taking this shit out. If it, if it, if it goes the other way, I'm not taking it out. It stays in. Oh, this is going to be cool. I, in 2020, people ask me, what is the challenge that you're going to lay out for 2020? Because in the, in the 2019 podcast, I said, Oh, I'm going to challenge myself. No pizza, no alcohol. A no chocolate, no right? Chocolate. I went yeah. the whole year. I didn't have any of it. Okay. Before I got this journey started, I said, no soda, no McDonald's, no Taco Bell, no Wendy's, no Burger King, all off the table. My biggest challenge this year was taking all the limitations off the table to see what happens. And here's the thing. There was no like drive to rush to any of these places to have any of these things. It's just, they're not on the table anymore. If it comes up and I happen to be stranded in the middle of nowhere and McDonald's is the only thing I'm going to have that McDonald's, but it's not going to be two or three sandwiches like it was before. It's going to be a completely different thing. It's not going to be this mad dash rush to now go and have all of these things that I didn't have for three years. It's none of that. It's just in moderation. If it comes up, I'm going to have these places, but I'm not seeking them out. I'm not excited. I, I don't miss them. But that's the right. greatest challenge is taking the the restrictions off and, you know, becoming unchained, for lack of a better term, and seeing how I react to that. And I have a feeling that this this Gary, this 2020 Gary is going to behave a lot differently than, let's say, 2016 Gary before he got started in 2017 and started doing all this cool shit. Right. Well, and that's first of all, that's incredible. That's that is a challenge. Um, but it's also like for me, that is the ultimate idea of freedom. Yeah. Uh, you know, 
taking away, you know, first of all, you take away the things that aren't good for you. You take away the trigger foods, you take away the things that you binge on and then finding that balance and having that relationship where you can say, yeah, I can if I want, but I just don't want to. Yes. That is freedom. That's really cool. You like, said it perfectly oh, right there. Really that cool. encapsulates exactly what I say that again for the people. Uh, which, which part about having what you want, but not Ultimate like seeking freedom. out. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Uh, okay. Well, that's, well, that's, yeah, that's ultimate freedom. Uh, having the option to get it, but not wanting it, being able to say, I can, if I want, but I don't want. Perfect. That's exactly what I was yeah. looking for. Cause I'm like, you know, the way you said it encapsulated my exact thought. Cause people will hear this and say, or they'll hear my podcast like January 1st when I announce all this and they're going to be like, Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's taking all of it. All, he's taking it all back. He's going to rush to go to the, no, it's none of that. <laughs> That's not yeah, what's yeah. happening here. Um, you know, yeah. it, it's just back on the table for discussion. Whereas before it was not. Yeah. That's it's, all. And like I said, that that's freedom, man. Like that's the, I think that's something that everyone should be striving for. Having, having that level of maturity, uh, in your relationship with food, yes. uh, because you much like I have dealt with addiction when it comes to food and food addiction is one of those things where you can't just, you know, can't just, Oh, I'm going to stop, you know, I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to cut it out completely. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to cut it out. You can't stop eating. Yeah. You can't, you just, you can't. Um, so you have to struggle and you have to find that relationship. So yeah, that level of maturity, there are certain things that I don't even have that level of maturity, uh, yet with my relationship with food. So yeah, I totally like, I totally support that. That is awesome. And the fact that you think you've reached that point in your journey to be able to do that, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a move I had to make because, there was, there was all these, you know, it was funny because I actually thought about it for a while. I'm like, okay, what's the next cool challenge uh, for 2020? Am I going to give up Mexican, which that's never happening? Am I going to give up chicken right. wings? You know, like, no, it's like, no, I'm, I'm three years into this thing now and I'm not perfect by any means, but I also know that my mindset on a lot of this has changed drastically from where it was. And so while it's not a hundred percent perfect, it is like probably 85, 90% of where I'd like it to be in terms of the mindset all of all of it. Right. And I know that, you know, these things, even though they're back up for discussion, they're not, you know, again, we're not racing to the front door the moment they open to go and indulge in all these things. It's just, that's not what's happening here. So it's, it's, it's a fun thought to challenge myself. And I mean, to me, that is the ultimate challenge because before it was like, you're, you're not having any of this stuff. We're taking it all off the table. Now we're putting it back mm -hmm. on for lack of a better so term. I'm curious. First of all, give me chicken wings or give me death. We need that on a shirt. Yes. Second of all, uh, I'm curious. What are your red flags? What, what, because going into this, someone level headed as, as you yourself, I imagine you have like red flags, like, uh, finding an excuse to go to, to one of those restaurants. Like what are your red flags that you have set up, uh, to monitor and to check in with yourself to make sure that you have that, that healthy relationship? Well, if number one, if I'm ordering more than one sandwich, that's a big problem right there, mm, right yeah. off the bat. Like one sandwich right. should do it. And actually uh sandwich is not even something I'm thinking about a lot. Like when I go to a lot of places now, like, let's just say chicken, for instance. I love chicken, whether it's Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Generally, mm -hmm. I'm getting either the chicken tenders or I'm getting the salad, like one of the two. So, like, bread, it's not banned, but I learned to kind of dial it back significantly. I think the only time I ever really, right. like, fuck with bread hard is, like, spaghetti because I just feel like, oh, got to have oh. that garlic bread. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't. It's not <laughs> yeah. spaghetti if there's not garlic bread. Exactly, but like you know, these burgers and stuff. And look, I'm not, I'm not a keto guy by any stretch of the imagination. But like a burger, I see these people where they eat it with just the cheese on it. There's no bun. That's how I roll with it. And it's not, you know, again, that's my I'm, jam, dude. Yeah, like I don't follow that keto, but that's what, like, mm -hmm. and it was, it was a gradual thing. So, 
Um, you know, when I first started on this thing three years ago, I, I, I had had two burgers. When I first started, I, I put it down to one burger. Then that, yeah. then that burger became a turkey burger. It still had all mm-hmm. the fixings on it. It still had my, you know, I still had my sauces. I never dialed back on that whatsoever. Still put the cheese mm-hmm. on there. Eventually the bun came off and it, it got put into a wrap. And then eventually mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, I, I'm not, you know, I can do without the wrap. Now I just eat the sandwich or the burger without the bread. It's just the burger, the cheese and the, and the, uh, the sauce on top. Um, and if I have fresh vegetables, like a tomato or lettuce or pickles, I'll put those on there. Um, mm-hmm. but that's kind of the evolution, like over time, um, is where I just like made a, a decision just kind of, you know, a, a long time here. It's like, okay, well, I guess I just, you know, I'm not really craving that bread. And so to go back to the red flag thing, if I'm at like a McDonald's, let's just say, and I'm, I'm ordering like, you know, two McDoubles, there's the immediate red flag. I'm probably right. going to order one sandwich. Maybe it's just going to be a big Mac or, you know, something like that, like one sandwich to where I'm not like, you know, looking to add on multiple things. It's going to be within the confines of like a meal that I can see and track everything. And right. uh, we're not going to go beyond what's in the scope of that meal. It's going to be the sandwich and maybe I'll have them take the bread off. Maybe we'll get creative with it. It'll be the yeah. lower, the lowest tier of fries. Like I guess they call that the medium, whatever that is. And then that, right. that soda will be subbed out with a water. That's going to happen okay. everywhere I go. And so if these things start to change, you know, if I go in there and I, and you know, because there may be a day where I'm like, okay, yeah, let me order two make, and then immediately I'm going to know in my head, okay, wait a minute there, Gary, wait a minute. This is what we used to do. This is a problem. Get a hold of the situation. Then I know we have a problem. I dig it. Yeah. I dig it. So I would also challenge you, uh, if you, when you do, uh, go to those restaurants, you're not supposed to, or excuse me, you're not supposed to now. Yes. Um, Post those meals on Instagram. You know yes. what I'm saying? Because like, here's my thing. Here's my thing. And this is, the, I find this true for me. I find this to be a huge tool. If I feel like I can't post something to Instagram, I'm doing something wrong. If I feel like That's I fair. cannot post my food to Instagram, if I feel like I have to hide it from my parents or my family, I'm doing something wrong. Yes. Whether I want to believe it or not, you know? No, it's totally fair. I'll tell you what got this whole idea into motion. It's when Burger King rolled out the Impossible Whopper. I have been wanting yeah. to try it for the longest time. And I'm like, oh, I can make a video, IGTV. It's content, baby. Yeah. Here's the yeah, problem, yeah. though. I was like, oh, but Gary's not allowed to go to Burger King. So how's he going to have this Whopper? Mm-hmm. It's on the band list. Right. Well, in right. tw- January 1, it's off the band list. And now we, I'm, I probably have had an Impossible Whopper by the time that you've heard this. you know. And that's what kind of got right. the idea, the, the wheels in motion here. That's what's up. Yeah. Has Kayla has Kayla tried that yet? Do you know? I do not know. We we did not speak of that when we talked on the podcast. I'm gonna have to, gonna have to message her because like I'm that's that's the other thing that I love. She and I are like complete polar opposites. She eats all vegetables, I eat all meat. Yeah. But like the beauty of it is we are still like I, I call her my friend. I call her one of my best friends on Instagram. You know? But that's just the level of maturity that uh we have. That's a good place I want to go since you're already right up in it. Um, Instagram. Yeah. It's one of the things I love to talk about with people on the podcast <laughs> because I like to figure out like, you know, how they got, you know, obviously everybody knows about Instagram, but like, how do you get right. into the weight loss world? How do you decide? Because it is a big decision to want to mm-hmm. share your, your journey, your day-to-day experiences, your inner thoughts. And like you said, you know, you share mm-hmm. the good, the bad, the ugly, which is great. That's exactly mm-hmm. what an Instagrammer should do. Um, you know, so how do you, I mean, obviously at some point you found about Instagram, you know about it. Great. We all did, but where do you decide I'm going to make this a thing where I can keep myself accountable. I can share my journey, you know, all that good stuff. How does that happen? Fantastic question. I appreciate that question. Um, so, the uh, the page as it is now was originally my personal page. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, it was just my my Instagram page. Um, <clears throat> so the idea behind my Instagram page is I eventually want to be a personal trainer and a self help coach. Right. So it's really it it's just I I walked into Instagram thinking okay I'm gonna make a scrapbook that people can look at um, because there there I believe there are two kinds of people in the world people that like to binge watch TV shows and then people that like to watch them as they're released week by week. Mm-hmm. And you run you run into both of those people on Instagram. 
Um, so, but my original motivation for starting my Instagram and posting stuff, and I think this is why it's a little easier for me to be as transparent as possible, is I want to be able to use this platform or however it exists in the future as a tool when it comes to my clients. Because uh, one of the most uh, intimidating things is walking into a gym, signing up for a personal trainer, and having that personal trainer look like they're chiseled for marble. Right. No one in their right mind, first of all, you're walking into a gym, you're not comfortable. You're not, it, you're not comfortable. And then you're going to sign up for a personal trainer, uh, and, and he or she looks like a Greek God. Okay, cool. So now I'm comparing myself to this person the whole time. And then you start spiraling into, oh, they don't know what it's like to be addicted to food. They don't know what it's like to be overweight. They don't know what it's like to be all these things. So the original idea for my Instagram was to have a portfolio, to have a scrapbook, to look at them and, you know, I'd sit them down, hand them Instagram or again, however it exists in the future uh, and go, I get it. Like, I get it. I've been there. I've done it. This is what I want to help you do. Cause it's not like my thing is my motivation when it comes to that is I, I genuinely, genuinely want to help people because I feel like. That's something that Gary V talks about. You know, if you know someone that has succeeded with the same issues that you have, then you have no excuse. Yes. So if I can help uh, give this goes back to my the, the constant positivity episode that I recorded. I don't think that as human beings, first of all, but also as people that uh, willingly put our lives out on the Internet, I don't think our goal should be to bring people happiness. Happiness is an emotion that is temporary. I think our goal should be to give people hope. So if I can give someone hope by being painfully transparent and, and having Instagram um, record it for me, well, yeah. that's what I'm going to do. That's the motivation behind it. you know. So that's, that's why I started my Instagram. And in my mind, I was going to stay quiet. I was going to stay small, not saying that I'm big by any means, but I didn't think I'd get any traction at all. And then all of a sudden, I started having these random people that I didn't know following me. And then more people followed me and then more people followed me. And now I've got people reaching out and I've talked about this before. I don't like, it makes me uncomfortable. You can see I'm clamming up. Um, it makes me uncomfortable when people tell me that I'm an inspiration. I really don't like that yeah. because in, in my mind, I'm just a 27 year old kid that's trying to figure my crap out. That's like, fair. you know, there, there, there are so many things that I still don't like about my situation. There's so many things about that. I don't like about me, but then I have these people go, uh, you're an inspiration. And I reached out to a friend of mine and what he told me kind of like it, after I picked my job off the ground, uh, it kind of changed the way I approach everything, not just Instagram, but absolutely everything. I told him the same thing. I was like, dude, I don't like being called an inspiration. And he was like, it's not about you. And I went, what do you mean? He went, it's not about you. It's about what people take and what they can apply to their lives from your story. So just share it, share all of it and realize that if someone comes to you and tells you that you're an inspiration, it's because something that you said resonated with them and potentially helped change their life. It's not about you. It's about what people get from you. And I just went, oh, yeah, that completely changes the game. Big time. I, I go through some of the yeah. same struggles that you're talking about. It's like, you know, you have one bad weekend and, oh, Mr. Mr. Hard Work Always Wins is not winning right now. He's a fucking loser this right. weekend, right? You have this like right. self-doubt. It's like, I'm not, who am I? I'm no, I'm no inspiration. I can, I can identify with that so much, dude. Like I, it just, and it, and it hurts, you know, you have this anxiety and you, you have all this self doubt and, and, and it'll, it'll screw with you for a while. You right. know, if you let it get to you, it'll get to you. Right. Well, and that's like one of the reasons I haven't posted on, on Instagram that I, that I've been off for the past two weeks is because in my mind, people are looking at me to be that rock, to be that foundation. But in reality, uh, I'm human and sharing that actually I just need to release all, all the pre-recorded episodes that I have. Cause I'm going to keep referring to them every time I'm on a, uh, someone else's podcast. Um, you should probably go on Instagram and talk about some of the stuff, you know, I mean, do you obviously do whatever you want. I mean, but you, right. you should probably just get no, on there I, and I say, this is where I'm at. I definitely need to. Cause one of the things that I was talking about in the podcast, uh, and that I have pre-recorded was, um, 
people find comfort and inspiration in in the truth and the truth is one i'm human and two uh, you know it's it's the idea that like we inevitably put certain people on a pedestal yes and and i say that i say this as humbly as i possibly can there are uh people that i feel like have put me on a pedestal because uh i am farther along in my journey than some people and i i make it look easy i've been told time and time again that i make it look easy yeah well it's not it, it's really really not so there's a part of me that even still like as as transparent and as open i as i am i still struggle with my weaknesses so going on instagram which i'm going to do as soon as we are done here and i'm going to talk about it and going hey i've been off plan for the past 2 weeks I haven't been to the, I've been to the gym in like a week and a half, like doing that, it, it doesn't scare me in that, like, that's my truth, but it scares me in that, um, I'm going to be disappointing people when in the reality, the reality is that one, as harsh as it sounds, it doesn't matter if I'm disappointing people, but two, I have found in the past, again, you know, I've already mentioned this, that people, uh, reach out to me and go, Hey, like I get it. I'm there and it feels good to know I'm not alone. Oh yeah. You're going to have probably the moment you post that you're going to have at least a minimum of five people that are going to reply and say, dude, I'm going through the same shit right now. I'm so glad that, you know, I'm not alone. So the, the, you know, once you put that out, that's, that's what's going to happen. Right. And that's, that's where the whole, like, I'd rather give someone hope than make them temporarily happy. Cause if someone that has put me on a pedestal goes, Oh wait, like he's, he's human. And he can do it too. Like he fell off for, for a time and he's going to get back on and then watching me for the next two weeks, kick ass and, and get back into my routine and then just take off again. Yep. You know what I mean? Uh, take off as in like, just get into the routine and run hard, not as in fall off again. Um, showing them that, you know, is, is a reminder. It's, it's, it's giving them hope that no matter what they can do it, you know, hundred percent, even the strongest. Even even the the quote unquote strongest of all of us, we still fail because we're still human. Yeah, no, it's, that's 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 uh, that's all very very good advice there. And and uh, for the people that don't know that don't read the show notes, give them your Instagram handle so they know where to go to find you. Yeah, it's going to be depressed. The number two determined. That is the absolute best place to get a hold of me. I will say I will give you a piece of advice now that you're a podcaster and all that. Um, get yourself a website, like an actual website. Cause this Instagram shit could go away at any time. Um, I think a lot of yeah, people don't realize I've, that you got a lot of people that are out just out there. They're pumping up their mm-hmm. IG. I got 20, 30, 40, 50,000 followers. I'm the fucking shit. Well, Instagram mm-hmm. goes away tomorrow. What do you got? You got nothing. So, right. uh, I would, my best advice to you is to get a website, have a place where people can go that is not on there. And, uh, man, keep doing you. I mean, I'm listening to your first podcast today and you sound like you've been doing this for 10 freaking years plus. And so the future is bright for you, my friend. And I'm glad, I'm glad we got connected. It. I am wrapping up a little bit because if I don't start dinner, my wife's going to kill me here soon, but, uh, I will say I've enjoyed oh, this conversation. Can- What's up? It's been an hour and a half. When did that happen? Yeah, exactly. See, this is this wow. is what happens. Uh, but what I want to say is, I'm glad we got connected, and this is definitely not the last podcast we're doing. I can say that I like you know, definitely we're not. Definitely doing another definitely. one. So we have to save a little bit for the next one. Well, yeah, because I feel like we could talk for another two hours. So, exactly. Yeah, I think. I, I think. <laughs> I think we'll be all right on the next one. And then the one after that and the one after that. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally <laughs> fine. Um, so depressed, the number two determine on Instagram is where they can find you. Let's talk about it is the podcast, man. You're on, you're on fire, brother. Seriously. Thank you for all the support. All right, man. What a chat. I'm telling you right now. I said this at the start of the show. I am telling you right now. I need to just quit. I mean, When you got guys out there like that, talking with that smooth voice, man, oh man, I got a, I I got no, I got no, uh, no chance. That's what that is. Uh, but, uh, big thanks to my man, Ethan. Again, that's at depressed, the number two determined on Instagram. Go check them out. Go check out the let's talk about it podcast. And, uh, that's going to do it for me for today. I do appreciate you guys hanging out. Of course. Don't forget patreon.com slash Gary Cantrell. Today's Wednesday. In two days from now, you could be listening to next week's show 
by signing up at patreon.com slash Gary Cantrell. It is the number one way to support the show. And of course, um, if you really enjoy the show, go to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, leave a review, please. That is free, by the way, to support the show. Leave in a review. It's really quick and easy. Five stars all the way. Tell people what you love about this podcast, what keeps you coming back week after week after week after week. Speaking of weeks, I'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate it. Talk soon. Talk soon.